with um, John Slack at uh, Golden Innisfree Farms. That's right. And we're just uh, introducing him as a new producer to the Ottawa Valley Food Co-op. And we want to hear all about what you're doing here, John. All right, well, our family just, again, moved out in the spring. For, uh, but we've been farming for the last over 20 years. And uh, so we raise uh, a medium-sized flock of uh, sheep. And uh, we milk about 75 to 80 of them. Um, and currently we've just been selling the milk into other creameries that have been producing like artisanal cheeses and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and our main pro um, process is always trying to discover um, a really efficient way of farming that also keeps the integrity and ecology of the land mm -hmm. and getting the most vibrancy out of the mineralogy in your soil into your food. So local obviously was you know one of our main uh, mm -hmm. aspects for that because the closer you get your food the more nutritious it is. Right. You came from southern Ontario. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I guess our main reason for being here was the soil was good, the ecology, the forest. I mean, you look at it and you see more uh, little leopard frogs, and and when the, the right different times of years, you have dragonflies, you got wild turkeys coming in, you got deer, and and I mean all these uh, different life forces and the birds, everything add to the vibrancy of the ecosystem. Everywhere. So it's, we knew that there were some very vibrant. Uh, food uh, distribution and systems like the co-op and mm -hmm. Ottawa has very vibrant farmers markets and people that want to support local food. Um, so we knew we were moving to an area where we can definitely make a go at a family farm that was small enough and supplying local markets. So we knew that was a viable option. Right. Um, How big is the farm? Um, we're 500 acres, but okay. um, with that it's diverse, which is another thing we liked about it. So I mean, we may mm -hmm. have uh, about 230 acres arable, maybe 250, and then another 200 acres of that will be hardwood and soft. So it's very diverse. So you get your wetlands, you also have your, your nice arable soils, and then you have even some more uh, lower level areas where it gets a little rocky, which work as like a good savanna type grazing area. Mm -hmm. So how many sheep do you have? Um, our flock size I think is about 180 right now. Um, so, But we're going to eventually grow that. I, we've lo looked at the numbers and the, and the farm may go up to about 350 to 400. Yeah. 400 would be a decent amount of uh, sheep for this farm because we wouldn't be um, getting to a point where we'd have to worry about running out of hay or if we had a, a year that was not as good hay production, we'd still be able to feed all the animals. Mm -hmm. So the sheep, and what we've done with the sheep, we'll go around and you'll see them, is we started with Romney and then we brought in Frisian, Lacan, and again, we may lose on milk production, but we are milking entirely on grass. That is our goal and uh, we still have to get the dairy up and going but we will have a, we will be milking uh, next year and the Excellent. ultimate plan is to build the creamery so we produce our own. Maybe some cheese? That's what we want. Wouldn't that be nice? Mm -hmm. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And um, Natalie, yeah the livestock, Johnny's the, the, the gardening guru uh, mm -hmm. and Natalie is responsible for all the animals. Um, I was fortunate enough to get these cows as, as heifers from a fellow by the name of Johan Kleisen, who had developed uh, a dual breed for milking and meat. And so these are uh, brown Swiss Canadian crosses. Uh, Johan's a biodynamic farmer, hence why He's left the horns on them, and to me it makes some sort of sense that you would leave your horns on your cows. These are our russet variety of potatoes. Right. So they have a netted skin, and they're a lot more of a thicker skin. Um, the reason we like these ones a lot is one, they got a really high nutrition, uh, nutritional profile in them, but the skins, they store the best, so they're good winter keepers. Um, and they make a great baked potato, french fries, like that skin offers a lot of different types of flavor. Right, right, um, right. So yeah, mostly that, um, and long rotation. So the biggest thing too is like this won't see potatoes again for at least 10 years. Um, I mean maybe longer because we can do that. So we'll do a five, five acre plot and then it goes maybe into corn or grain um, for the animals mm -hmm. or it goes straight into grass. And the grass rejuvenates it again because potatoes are harder on your soil. Um, but we also put about 10 tons of compost and a ton per acre of rock minerals. Meaning they take more nitrogen out of your soil. Is that um, what you mean with harder. Well, or? harder because of the way you're working the soil. I mean, you gotta you gotta cultivate it in, and then you gotta hill it, and then you're coming through with the shaker, 
Um, so yeah, you're 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 disturbing. you're disturbing your soil system and potentially you know um, losing some of your topsoil. And yeah, they're they're tubers, so they mm -hmm. they also you know you take out those nutrients. Um, but putting it back in grass and the amount of compost we put on this field, um, in no way are we working in a in a downwards uh, cycle. Um, we're actually improving the soil within that. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you don't want the beetles, you you're gonna have to uh, do long rotations um, yeah. and and it's in a fair distance apart. Like uh, you can't just plant a potato field here and then say, okay, well, we haven't grown them there, so let's put them there. It's still it's still close enough where some of the bugs will um, come So through. I don't have five acres, so I'm going to come and buy them from you. <laughs> well, you could do some, in smaller plots, it's manageable. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to have a nice backyard garden. Boxes? Yeah, because <laughs> then you can, one. it's not hard to pick them, right? Sure. And so it's sure. still, but on a large scale, if you're going to do it, uh, yeah, you got to, <laughs> you got to rotate them through. I think I'll buy them from you. Oh, thank you. <laughs>